Peace. Dreams. <laughs> Do you have dreams? You know people who got dreams? Do you buy dreams? Do you sell dreams? Do you chase dreams? Do you invest in dreams? Dreams. Is dreams really the real reality? Dreams. Which is best though? Chasing dreams and investing in dreams. What's the difference? What up Veronica, what up Cheryl, what up Victoria? Piece of the family, press two if you're gonna share this video, let's get it popping. What is your dream? What's a dream that you either been chasing? What's a dream that you bought? What's a dream that you sold? Or what's a dream that you've invested in? Start typing. Start typing right off the gate. What's a dream that you've bought? What's a dream that you've sold? What's a dream that you are chasing? Or what's a dream that you're invested in? They're all different. Oh, also, I'm Coach Kyrie, Team Taurus, Atlanta, Georgia. Please introduce yourself. What up, Ree? What up, Latissa? Oh, yeah. Press 2 if you share this one. We're getting ready to get all the way in right here. Abdul Kool, Taffa Latat, Waba Zoom, Gamma Fair, Goon, Shalel Kaloon. I am in the love of all, and all love is in me. I am a part of all, and all is a part of me. And I am one with all, and all is one with me. And I can succeed as a part of all and fail as an individual. I can be all that I wish in all as long as my wish is to stay in all. I am never alone. All is, I am. All can, I can. All does, I do. Mr. J. Elaku. What up, fam? Team Scorpio, Greensboro, North Carolina. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Thanks, everybody, for sharing. Appreciate that. Appreciate them twos. If you just got on here, press two. If you're ashamed to share Coach Kai, you're on your page, then beat it. Did you know that there were, um, in, in, you have internal organs and you have external organs? Did you know that the, the Dow will say that there are 36,000 organs, 18,000 internal, 18,000 external? Most everything, that's basically what it is. There's an internal and then there's an external. Dow your moon, you ain't got no dreams. Zero. Nothing that you, you ain't got a dream you chasing, selling, buying, or investing in. Ouch. Anyway, these organs that we have, there's internal organs and then there's external organs. Like the skin is an external organ, you know? The liver and the spleen and kidneys, those are internal organs. I look at the ears as external organs. I look at the eyes also because they'll pop out. That's an external organ. But there's other organs that scientists haven't even discovered yet over here in the West because they're slow. Thanks for sharing this video, everybody. I appreciate that. And when you look at dreams, that's kind of like what it is. Internal dreams. And external dreams. External dreams are somebody else's dreams. Internal dreams are your dreams. So let's look at chasing dreams. You could chase your dreams. I like that idea. You could chase somebody else's dreams. I'm not too favorable of that idea. You could buy your dreams I'm pretty cool with that unless it's some kind of narciss narcissistic dream that you're buying that's yours now that's that. it's a touchy subject right there this is dreams ooh wow because now when you bought somebody else's dreams you just easily move to the next category of investing. You're investing in someone else's dream. Hmm. Now, if you bought your own dream, you're investing in your own dream. All right. Because you on an investment, you got to buy in. So buying and investing is kind of close. So if I buy my own dream or invest my own dream. Hmm. That's that. That. I'm more agreeable than that than buying and investing in others' dream, other dreams. 
Not totally against it, because I'm going to get to that too. And then what about selling dreams? If you're selling yourself a dream, I'm kind of tough on, I don't know, because I got to sell myself on something. A lot of times we do have to sell ourselves on dreams because we don't believe in ourselves. We don't, we don't, we don't really believe our believe in ourselves. And then sometimes we sell dreams to others. There's a lot of people out here that's all they're doing is selling dreams, promises. Any of y'all ever bought some promises before? You ever had somebody sell? Because you couldn't buy a dream from somebody else unless they sold it to you. So why did I say Mercury Retrograde Report? Because I told y'all earlier, like at least six weeks ago, in this Mercury Retrograde, you were going to see who people really were. Now, I was talking to one of my homies today, and they told me some news that was semi-shocking to me. And they had receipts and they even texted to me a PDF. And I was like, oh, dang, really? Basically, that um, it kind of showed me that I was buying someone else's dream and someone else was selling a dream. But I wasn't like totally bought in because I hadn't spent like I could look at how much money I had spent on that. And it wasn't a lot. So I was like, Psh. Well, that's not going to hurt. And then he told me a story about someone selling a dream and how that person was, oh, this person is, this person sold this dream to this person and this person bought it. And now this person is out of all this money. This person is about to lose X, Y, Z and things are really bad for the person who bought this dream. I said, well, the person who was selling the dream, what did you learn about them? They were like, oh, this person, they lie and they are pumping things up and they shouldn't be doing this and woo, 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 woo. I said, the person that you feel was victimized because you're making the person who's selling the dream the villain. There's got to be a victim if there's a villain. What did you learn about the person who's a victim? He was like, hmm. I said, you learned that the victim is a dream buyer. And most dream buyers are gamblers. They make their money and make their living gambling. Listen to what I'm saying. You can have a nine to five, have a check coming in, but you be locked into that nine to five because you gamble with your capital. You gamble with your income. You gamble on buying somebody else's dream that's not yours. That's not valid. That doesn't compliment you. If I'm buying a dream, I'm buying a dream that compliments me. I'm buying a dream that compliments where I'm going. I'm buying a dream that's parallel to my dreams. You see what I'm saying? I'm not buying a dream that's really some a fantasy. Cause to me, there's nightmares, dreams, and then and then illusion and fantasies. And then illusion is mixed up in there somewhere. I, but I think illusion is illusion will happen to you in your waking conference, con, uh, uh, consciousness. What up, Miss Nikki? What up, Miss Moon? Hey, Rhonda. Miss Smith is in the building. Latoya Harden is in the building. What up, Cheryl? Hey, Keisha Anderson. Cheryl says she bought somebody else's dream. What up, Miss Ross? Gabrielle says, I've done a lot of chasing others' dreams. Then she put dot, dot. So... I want to do this conversation about, man, uh, whose dream are you chasing? Whose dream are you buying? So I ain't going to never be upset at a salesperson because in business, sales have to, sales have to move on. S sales move the word. Sales, sales moves the world. Everything has to be sold. You selling yourself on yourself. You selling yourself to another person. Another person selling themselves to you. It's always a sale going on. And sometimes they start to sell you a dream. Now me, I find between dreams and possibilities. What up, June? What up, Miss Bowles? Roxanne Mosley is in the building. 
between a dream and a possibility. Do you know the difference between a dream and a possibility? See, I put my money on a possibility. Quick. But I have put my money on dreams in the past. And then I'd be upset at the person who sold me the dream. One time somebody sold me a dream. It was uh, too, too good to be true. I think it was like a VCR and something else and something else. And I had to give them the money while they went into the house. And I had to stay in the car. And they took my money, went through the front door, went out the back door. And never came back with my stuff. And since I was young and dumb and I was in somebody's projects that weren't my projects, I couldn't go to the house and they was like, who are you talking about? Ain't nobody came through here. That joker was already long gone with my money. And it wasn't even my money. It was my cousin's money. So I went and told my cousin I lost his money and he went and got his gun and came back and was like, take me over there. Now my cousin had a gun and he was getting it for defense to protect. Us, when we got over there, he definitely was not going to do nothing because he ain't built like that. And when we got over there, he didn't get our money back. Excuse me. He didn't get his money back. But it was all because I bought the dream first. And then I sold it to my older cousin. And then he bought it off of me. Ooh, probably about 200. I think some for some reason, like 170 is in my mind or something like that. I don't know, because maybe he was trying to get us for 250 and we talked him down to 170 and we got nothing. He didn't even bring us a box with a brick in it. My romantic self brought relationship dreams. Oh, those dreams are all forms. Most dreams really that you buy are on the fantasy side. You normally won't buy and invest in a, a horror story, you know, a horror movie. But most dreams you'll buy in, um, what is that? A nightmare. You normally won't buy into a nightmare, but if you buy into a fantasy and then it don't work out, it turns into a nightmare. So who's to blame? The person selling the nightmare, the person selling the dream, the person selling the fantasy or the buyer. So when I told my people today, when he was telling me about this person who was selling this dream person bought it he was trying to make it seem like the 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 person who bought the dream who now was out of a lot of money potentially could lose their job and some of their uh, assets and properties because they bought this dream of course it was some money involved and one person was like i'm gonna take care of it and then they, and the other person was like sure I'll, okay and then the other person never took care of it they was like i don't have it After, i've already done all the work blah 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 so I said that who bought the dream, my man said, yeah, they were really gullible. Nobody likes to be called gullible. Nobody likes to be called naive. You, that's almost like profanity. You gullible. You naive. I might as well call you a B-I-T-C or whatever. Or a... a, a, a Manure head. I'm doing good at having cursed his whole life. We ain't gonna start now. Or whatever. A hole. But no, to call somebody gullible and naive, that stings. So, what do we do about these dreams, yo? And are you buying a dream? And if you're buying a dream, why are you buying this dream? Why are you investing in it? Did you do any research on it to see if this dream is a possibility? I recently talked to someone and they bought a dream. They didn't really buy a dream though. It was a possibility, but they were looking at it as a dream because they didn't do any fact checking. They didn't think that after they bought it, they weren't going to have to do anything. It's like you buying a car and then you just walk by the car and think the car is going to take you back and forth to work and you're going to get a check. If you buy a new car to go to, to get you to work, you still have to drive the car to work and get out of the car, go into the job, put in the hours, leave the job, clock out, get in the car and go home. The car is a piece of the puzzle of you getting the money from the job. But because you bought a new car, 
doesn't mean you don't have to go to work anymore. Does this make sense to anybody? Press one if that makes sense. Because some people will be trying to, what up, Miss Dia? What up, Aja? Some people, like I said, they'll buy a car and think because they bought the car, they're supposed to get a check from their job. But you didn't go to work. You didn't drive the car to work. Then when you got to work, you didn't get out the car to go inside to put the work in. You ain't never punched a clock. You just bought the car. I was like, I got a new car to get to work. So obviously the money is about to come. Who fault is that? Is that? Are you going to blame the car salesman? Man, this new car right here will efficiently get you to work. You'll save all this money and it'll all be so wonderful. These tires last a long time. It's an electric car. You can plug it up right here. It helps the environment. All of that. I'm giving you this great price. You only have to pay $250 every two months. It's $125 a month and you'll pay it off in two years. And then you don't go to work. And then they come take the car. Who, 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 who did that? The buyer. What dreams are you buying? And then what dreams are you chasing? Should you be chasing dreams or should you be chasing possibilities? So when I said this Mercury retrograde is going to show you who people are, I've always been saying what? Trust what people show you. Trust what people show you. You have to watch people who chase dreams. I saw a lot of people this, this Mercury retrograde who not dealing in reality. They still dealing in fantasy. Deep fantasy too. They hiding from something. They got so much trauma going on that there's, they got so much trauma going on that they really can't see the light or they can't see the facts. Cause they, cause, cause people, some people put trauma with naivety and being gullible. And then they let it lead right over to can I be embarrassed? A lot of people ain't chasing their dreams because they're afraid to be embarrassed. They I don't want to be embarrassed because I'm chasing believes in it. I kind of believe in it, but since I ain't got nobody else to believe in it, I'm not going to chase my own dream. I'm not going to buy my own dream. I'm not going to invest in my own dream. I'm not going to sell myself my own dream. Because I don't want to be embarrassed if I fail. That means you bought another dream. You bought a failure nightmare. You was like, I'll take this nightmare for 50 cent. Let me take this nightmare for 50 cent, take it home and feed it. Why do you do that? I wouldn't do that. Don't buy nightmares and then take them home and feed them so they'll grow up to be big. Because they'll get big as the tank that they're in. And your mind is big as hell. So this dream... It could turn into a nightmare that's huge. Same way as if you buy a dream from somebody else. It might be like one of them little chia pet things that you like pour water on. They just start growing. It's going to grow as big as the pot. If then if you have a green thumb, you know, the pot, once you put in a bigger pot, the plant is like, oh, I can do bigger things. Dreams, man. I'm watching folks. Are, what up, Miss Childs? I'm watching folks who are buying the dreams and then playing the victim. My partner who I was talking to, he told me another story today about something that happened to him. Ooh, I was like, that was terrible. How could that person do that to you? And then my homie said, man, I don't know. But that person is this. That person is that. I can tell that person doesn't care about me anymore. I can tell this person doesn't do this anymore. I said, what did you learn about yourself in this situation? Uh, did I let myself get in that situation? Because you avoided all the signs. You avoided all the signs because you wanted it to be another way. How many of y'all done that before? Press three. You, you, you got to the fork in the road. You saw the signs and then you avoided them and then went another way because you didn't want what you saw to be true. You saw some reality and then you went to war. You saw reality and then you was like, no, that's that's terrible because that's my mother. That's my brother. That's my child. 
That's my husband. That's my wife. That's someone I love. That's someone who said they love me. There's no way that that possibility could be reality. So I'm going to buy this dream. I'm going to invest more in this dream. The reason I picked the number three, because that's a crossroads. You got to the fork in the road and you went left instead of right. So you got left. You didn't go right. You went, you went left and got left. Ms. D'Angelo, Stephanie Wong is in the building. When there's any time there's a dream around, there's also some reality around. There's also some possibilities around. So Cheryl and Miss Nikki and Miss Fulton, they know about that. You've seen it. You've seen it. You just no way. If you just got here, please press two if you shared the video. Somebody drop this in one of these hot groups around here that needs this. Especially if you're doing magic. Because you could be doing a spell because you're chasing somebody else's dream. Somebody can sell you a dream and you go out here and pursue a ritual to try to chase somebody else's dream. Somebody will sell you a dream. You will buy it. Then go out of here and purchase a whole magic kit in order to try to make this dream that you bought. That's not a possibility. That has no reality based around it come into fruition. And then you'll say the ritual don't work. I bought this magic kit, but the ritual don't work. Say what? How is it somebody else's fault? You the one bought it. As an investor, man, you have to you have to look, you have to watch. You have to look and pay attention, man. You gotta look and pay attention. Whew. But we just like snatching stuff up because you know why a lot of people get jacked up? What do you think the number one reason people get jacked up off of dreams? Why do you think that? Of course, I know somebody's gonna say you're too romantic. Cheryl probably is over there thinking that. I would agree that's a good ass answer. It might be the only answer. But you got this fantasy. And romance ain't real. Romance is sweet. But it ain't real. That's just like dreams. Now some dreams are indicators. All dreams ain't bad. Some dreams are indicators of things to come. Some dreams are prophecies. Some dreams deserve chasing. I got a dream of having like a smaller stomach. And like 20 pounds lighter. That's worth chasing. But it's only going to happen if I get out there and do what I need to do. Check off the possibilities. Make that happen. I hope I'm making sense. So. Investigate your dreams. See what the possibilities are. See what the reality is. Stop ignoring the red flags. Stop ignoring the yellow flags. Right. Because you romantically inclined to say, I want this dream so bad. I'm just going to go with this. I must have this dream because now I'm, since I, I invested in this dream and I know it won't work. People know I'm invested in the dream. And guess what? Now I'm embarrassed. Stop telling all your business. You can you can go after a dream without telling people. That's a big thing for me. I have to work on that. I'm still working on it. People be like, Kai, you're, you, you just be dropping so many jewels and you be doing every day. Kai, is struggling with something or working towards something or trying to figure something out myself. What did um, Sifu Kelly Larson? I'm a clearing machine. Now I got so much incomplete homework over here that I really want to do and get to and study. I ain't touched it. I ain't even made my I didn't make my bed up today. I probably make it up just because in a few minutes. Like I have a shirt over here that I want to take to the cleaners, but it's laying on my bed. It should be out by the front door so I can take it to the cleaners tomorrow. <sighs> It's all right every day, baby. But I'm looking at what's the possibilities. What's the possibilities? Because when you get into the dream thing, somebody else could get inside their head and then enter the conversation. That's what sales is all about. 
entering the conversation that's already going on in your head. Like yesterday, I made a video because I wanted people to know that I have a product and a service that could help you. My Prosperity 365 GPS. It's a master class. So what I needed to do was enter the conversation that you already had going on. I do. I this. Yep. I don't sell dreams. I sell possibilities, though. Because you can look at it. You can look at the track record. You can look at the testimonials. And you can look at my own life and be like, oh, you're using that? Okay, I see the possibility of how this could work for me. It's not a dream. But recently, I snatched up and bought a dream because when I was over there dealing with uh, the, the Ava, I bought the dream, but it wasn't working yet. I tried to make it a possibility because I was romantically engaged with it. And I was like, ooh, I can make some quick money with this if it does this, if it does that, if it does that. I ain't check all the possibilities. Lafayette, Miss Johnson, what up with you, Team Virgo? So, I'm not going to say I got burned, but I paid for lessons, $150. But I learned a lot more about artificial intelligence, conversational AI. Thank you, Miss Dugan, for sharing this video. I appreciate you. I'm Coach Kyrie, Team Taurus, Atlanta, Georgia, if you just got here and I haven't introduced myself. It's probably because you haven't introduced yourself. What's your team, Zodiac, and what city and state are you repping right now? Um, I sell possibilities. Tomorrow's Cyber Monday. My sale is still going to be going on. All of these help increase your possibilities of your greatness, of your self-mastery, of your self-discovery. I got a Prosperity 365 course, GPS. That's a possibility because if you take the course and then if you sign up for the course but then don't take it, then that ain't on me. It ain't no dream. It's just sitting there. I got a Moon Magic 28 course. If you don't sit down and understand what the cycles of the moon are and you don't map them out because I gave you the whole formula, then I gave the possibility, but guess what? You ain't sit down and map it out. Then if you sit down and then I also have a, I have a free goal writing course that's absolutely free. How you write your goals? That's a possibility. But then if you don't even get a free class and you don't, you don't get it, then I'll be like, what are you doing? So I think everything I produce is at least a thousand dollars. I should start charging like it too. Here's a thousand dollar course. Then sometimes I'd be like, oh man, is anybody gonna buy it? Yeah, but if one person buys it, that's the same work as I put into 10 people buying it. Hmm, quite interesting. What up, Team Pisces in North Carolina? Team Aquarius in the VA. I see Savannah, Georgia in the building. Team Virgo. So my moon magic course. It was a, it is normally ninety eight dollars. Half of that is forty nine. The prosperity three sixty five to me that's the biggest possibility for the fastest. That's the biggest bang for the buck out of all the things that I have. The prosperity three sixty five coachklive dot com. Give thanks is the thing that I'm doing. Coupon code. That's the coupon code for the astrology consult. Only three hundred dollars. They won fifty. Guess what we're talking about in the astrology con uh, consultation? More of your possibilities, more of your potential, but strategies to realize them. I'm not doing no dreams. I ain't doing nothing about. Oh well, uh, somebody else told me this, that, and the third. I don't want to hear that. What up, Miss Hawkins? How you feeling today? Thanks for joining. K. Johnson says I. I had to realize that when I started my business at the beginning of the month of November, I wasn't charging for my time, just a product. I had to revamp my pricing. Good, you don't have to have me telling you. Most most of us are char us are not charging enough for our expertise. I don't I don't have any services. I got products and expertise. That's it. I don't got a service. I got an expertise. I'm an expert at what I do. I'm a relationship science master. Yep. Because the math, the number one priority, oh, this is fun. I'm on a priority in relationships. This is why I be saying this BS when somebody say, oh, if I haven't seen the person do it, I'm not going to go over there and get it from them. Are you stupid? 
What are you talking about? Just because you don't see me do it, if I say something that's got wisdom in it, then you just you just not gonna take it. That's how the human mind is conditioned, though. If I pulled up in the Mercedes Benz, the Bentley or something, and I'm walking around in the condo and I say the same thing, and I have on a suit and tie, then you'd be like, "Oh yeah, it's gotta work now. Oh for sure. Oh yes, Lord, have mercy. He got his name carved in the back right there." Huh? But that person could be talking crazy. What's up, Alexis? You didn't give me a guacamole recipe yesterday either. But I figured it out. Don't worry. You're supposed to help me. So we we get to um this piece about me being a relationship expert. Cause I was like, what's the what's the number one thing in being a relationship expert? It's not getting people together. It's calling people on their bullshit. That's how you make a relationship work. Somebody has to call the bullshit. Somebody got to say something about the BS in the relationship. Because that's normally what is got the relationship jacked up anyway. It's janky because there's some BS in there and ain't nobody want to address it. Then sometimes they call it the elephant in the room. I'll say it. Well, coach, what's your relationship looking like? Happiness. Happiness. Yeah, stuff I have to deal with, but not no struggles. When I think about a relationship and my relationship that I'm involved in, all I have is great memories. Happiness and warmth and joy and wanting to participate in them more and more and more and more and more. That's what a relationship is all about. It ain't got nothing to do with whether you married, how many kids y'all got. Is do you want to that relationship well if there's some bullshit in there you don't want to wake up and do that relationship if it's a business relationship personal relationship with uber relationship with a restaurant like me um soul food soul food vegetarian up here in the west end on ralph david abernathy i said the whole name the whole address and i had them on economic sanctions I used to go there every time when I used to come through Atlanta. I used to stay in North Carolina. I used to come through Atlanta all the time. All the time. I used to always be like, I'm eating here. This food is healthy. This is, It's a little expensive, but I'm going to keep coming here, keep coming here, keep coming here. And then something happened, and I put economic sanctions on them. The relationship got jacked up. One of the servers did something I didn't appreciate. And I was like, I ain't spending no more money here. This relationship got some bullshit in it. I ain't excited about eating in your store no more. I think I went like 15 years before I spent some money in there. And when I say spent some money, I mean like I got a wrap that was like $7. So in the last 15 years, I probably, I ain't, I still ain't spent $100 in there. No, I've gotten two smoothies, maybe some ice cream one time, and maybe three wraps in 15 years. But I used to go there all the time. Through the 90s, I was just boop, 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 boop. I was just coming through there, coming through there, coming through there. But now, nah, the relationship is jacked up. A lot of y'all in jacked up relationships because you see the bull jive, but you still go, you still run right at it. Because you bought some dream, and then you don't want to, and then you don't want to get you a refund. Sometimes you need to get a refund that you bought. That's not yours. How many have you ever bought a dream that was not yours that you would like to get a refund on? Press five and raise your hand. Press five. Let me see. You bought a dream. It wasn't yours. Or you sold yourself on a dream and didn't even have no possibilities of working. You invested a whole bunch in it and then you'd be like, man, I wish I had that back. Can I get a refund? Press five if you know what I'm talking about. Let me press five first. I got my own thing up here. Five. What I should have done was hit a whole bunch of fives. I'm at the point now where I don't be really upset like that. Do I need to like get a refund? Because I look at it as my tuition. I burnt myself. I did it to myself. I ain't getting ready to. I ain't getting ready to be. I, I can't be blaming people no more. For these choices. Old as I am. Ah, player. I guess a lot of y'all raising y'all hands. Wow. It's a bunch of fives just went up in the air. Okay. <laughs> Ms. Diaz, did I got my refund? 
I'd like my time refunded. Sure, I'll forget about it. That's definitely a fantasy and an illusion. What a Blondell. Our creative minds, though. Why we ain't buying into that? The creative mind is giving us possibilities. You got to know the difference between dreams and possibilities. And you got to know, are you buying from a reputable seller? Is somebody selling you possibilities, are they reputable? Or are they selling you some dreams and they're not reputable? Cheryl says, I'm taking accountability for the time I spent. And we, you know, normally y'all know when I'm talking about money, I don't use the word spend. I use the word circulate. But when it comes to time, you ain't circulating it. You're spending it. It's going out and it ain't coming back. Time is really the only thing that you can spend. I can't spend money. I'm circulating money. It's going to come back. Now, well, I'm not going to say that. You can't spend money and it not come back to you. But that's not a good investor. And I try to be a good investor. I want to be, in a, I want to be a good investor of my own time. Brother Blondell, peace to the God. How you feeling, Lord? Yes. So, um, that's really all I got for y'all tonight. I don't want to keep you too long. I want to be able to let Jokers catch the replay. Please press two if you press if you share this video. If you just got here, that that you shared it, that you shared this. And I ain't selling it. I'm expecting it. Dreams. Brother Blondell, let me catch him up real quick. We're talking about dreams. Are you chasing them? Are you buying them? Are you investing in them? Or are you selling them? What's the difference between dreams and possibilities? And if you buy a dream or chase a dream or invest a dream that's not yours, and you get your head peeled all the way back to the white meat, ew, ew, ew. what does it say about you? What does it say about you? What a Val VJ in the building. What does it say about you? If you bought the dream that somebody else was selling, we talked about this is an internal and an external conversation. The Dow will say that there's 18,000 organs on the inside of the body, 18,000 organs on the outside of the body. Most still not discovered by modern Western scientists because, you know, they corny anyway. Right. So whose fault is it? If you invested in a dream or you chasing a dream, how many of y'all got dreams you chasing now? I just want to ask you to do two things. Whose is it? Are you chasing your dream or somebody else's? And because if it's yours, it's okay to chase it and then buy it and invest in it. That's okay. But what are the possibilities of it coming to fruition? You increase the possibilities of your own dreams when you put some work in, some effort in it some intelligence, some wisdom, but you decrease it when you don't. I have, uh, I, I study with, I study with a brother, Doc. He like, man, you could be buying. Anything. Well, I already had a dream of being rich, spiritual, and being an immortal. Before I met him, I, I was like, man, there's some people on this planet that don't die. I, I believed in immortality and reincarnation before I met him. And then come to find out he was talking about the same thing. And then he started giving me more facts about the possibilities of all of those things happen. Being rich, being spiritual, using magic, and being an immortal. I was like, man, give me some of that. Give me some of that. I need that around me. Yep. And then I started meeting other people who had similar possibilities in their line. Miss Dugan, she has similar possibilities like me. Brother Blondell, he got similar possibilities like me. Yep. His, his, his ways and actions is similar to mine. Organizations that he's a part of, similar to, similar to mine. I'm having a not so nice hair day today. So this is how we doing it. Yeah. And I'm about to take a shower too. I'm about to go watch the episode of the man in the high castle first. What up, Jacina DeMarco? How you feeling? 
So check yourself. Find out which one is, is it your dream or is it your possibility? Are you chasing? Are you buying? Are you investing or are you selling? Watch yourself. Watch yourself. What is that? Uh, that was uh, mystical. Watch yourself. I don't know the rest of it. Be cool. Something like that. It's a good song. All right. So I appreciate y'all this evening. I just want to get that off right there. I'm going to share this video to a homie of mine who inspired me. I was this, this. Most of my videos are inspired by real life occurrences. I'm really a news reporter. But the part about the prophet, I forgot to put that on there. I don't know if I'm an astrologer no more. I think I'm just a prophet because I did. Well, speaking of astrology, it, you could call it a prediction or whatever. But the Mercury retrograde piece. I told y'all that this Mercury retrograde was going to, sh people were going to show you who they really were. Now, if you don't like the reality of what people are showing you and you still buying another dream or investing in another dream, that's on you. But it's happening. And yeah, danger. That's it right there. What up, uh, Magus? But this, retro this retrograde is over on Saturday. We're in the third phase, so it's almost over. All right? Blondell said we have to be creators. We are creators, but we need to we need to be creative. We already are creative. Like, we can be a creator and sit around and not do nothing, which is some BS. Yeah. But anyway, now you're seeing, like, the 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 trailer. I mean, like, the, uh, the encore performance. A Mercury retrograde looks like this. It looks like the preview. Then it looks like the actual movie. Then you get the encore. Encore. The Mercury retrograde. That's the trailer. Here's what's coming. Second part is the actual movie. It's long. You'd be like, well, damn. And the last part is the encore. And like you've seen, it's like when you're running it back and you're like, man, this is the third time I done seen this. Oh my God. All right. So, uh, yeah. Some more stuff is coming this week, but it is loosening up. All right. So y'all be easy. I'm so happy and grateful y'all are here. Thank y'all so much. What up, Shabona? Everybody who has already jumped on the offer of Coach Kair's Astrology uh, Cyber Monday sale, please check your email. I sent you an email to schedule your appointment this week or whenever you're going to schedule it. Um, it's half off. My consultations are normally 300. Um, they're 150 until tomorrow night at midnight. The coupon code is Give Thanks. The website is CoachKAstrology.info, and then I also have three master courses that are also 50 percent off. My astrology course, 150. The Moon Magic course is 98 dollars. That's 49 dollars, and the Coach K Live 365 Prosperity class is also. 50% off, that's $49 too. To me, you get the most bang for the buck from the Prosperity 365. You get your you get your life in order without having to know any astrology. As long as you can count, as long as you can add three to any number, you can add three to any number like from one to 12, like one plus three is four, four plus three is seven, or two plus three is five. And if you're born in November and you can count three, so if it's November, that'd be 12, 1, 2, that'll be February, okay? It's only 12 numbers, and then you just add and go around like, if you can do that, then this is a breeze. It's the most bang for the buck. To me, I want it to be my number one course. I probably, I would really like to sell it to a 1,000 people. Hmm. Yes, my Prosperity 365 course. That's that's like the heater because this is about energy levels. Where's your energy level? How to navigate your own energy for the rest of your life. Go check that joint out, CoachKLive.com. CoachKLive.com, if you got questions, all you got to do is hit me on my DM. All right, I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. I found you in peace, and I'm going to leave you in prayer. What was the big thing that you took from this share though, first? Please type, type or tell me what was the big thing you took from this share that you could use right away. And also on a scale of 1 to 10, how did I do it? Let me press 2 if you sharing it. Huh? Yes, you just got here. I expect you to share it somewhere on your page or whatever. Dreams, baby. Anubakoa, Gijilaki Minka, Tatia Tezara, Kabel Renat, Amcha Sagvanu, Tahara Nunara, 
Aki bo de she ye kadeka, kaba va shamlan, barkum tyram rock a maid to zee ka take to meet gamlan, kasin kadosh, baru, tufka na hell out of take her, ye keed ge hell on chopin as a craig a tushka take shavata nuka bell ushma to zaka to know your day a tile a moke, brruk shem, kavo makuto, lalam vaed. All right, fam. Thank you, Miss Fulton. Appreciate it. Mr. Marco says, I feel it too. No more gray, black, or white. It's all being revealed. Peace to the fam. Good night. Well, happy shadow. Peace.